first time I saw a Skyline GTR was actually at my uncle's house in Japan. I would always see it and I was always interested in it. I mean, I would, I would look at the body lines and, and sometimes he would take me out and drive it and the way it handled, it was, it was great. I mean, it was nothing I had experienced before. I had this curious love with it before, but the moment I drove it, that, that curious love became a, a true love, I would say, with, with the car itself. My name is Gary Lanfear. I drive a 1989 Skyline GTR. The first time my uncle let me drive the, the, his Skyline GTR, it was, it was amazing. I mean, I, I never had experienced anything in my life like that. Um, you know, it was, it was slightly mod, like the big thing of, GTRs before was, you know, people would put exhaust, intake, and they would do a Mines ECU flash. So it just had the basic mods, but the thing was so fast. It sounds so great. It, I, you know, I felt, I felt like I was invincible in the car. And it just like the all-wheel drive system would just put me back in place whenever I would feel like I, I would start to lose it. And um, yeah, I know. I mean, it's it's a feeling the car gives you that you know not uh, not just any car can give you. When I was 15 years old in, in Japan, I mean, you would see you would see a couple of GTRs, you know, uh, you would see some, you know, you would see some GTSs. It's kind of like nowadays when you see a Mitsubishi Evo and you see a Lancer. You know, you probably would see more Lancers than you would see a GTR. But you would see a couple, you know, still, it, you still, you know, it, it would put a, you still get that feeling every time. It's, it's kind of like what we feel now when we see R35, you know. You, you do see them quite a bit, but you don't see them often. But, you know, every time you see one, if you're a GTR fan, you still get, you get, you get that little rush of like, wow, there's one out in the wild. I found this GTR was that I had it in the back of my mind that I, I needed to have one eventually, some point in my life. But I knew it wasn't, you know, it wasn't possible because of the laws in the states and all that. And I wasn't going to go and try to, um, you know, buy one and sneak it into the country or any, anything like that. So once I, I, I did some research and I found out that the cars um, were going to start becoming legal after 25 years old of age, that's when it just sparked this thing inside of me where I was like, all right, this is. This is the moment I need to get one. Then I started searching for one uh, in Japan, and I found, I found my car in um, Kobe. It was clean. The paint was in great condition. Uh, the the engine had been overhauled with a, a Nismo N1 block and some other goodies that I would have done to it to start the build had already been done to it. It was perfect. At that point, I flew out, checked it out. I was working with an uh, importer uh, at the time to help make sure I had all the correct paperwork and make sure I did everything correct. So. Paid for it, the importer, I paid the importer. He took care of the rest. He took care of all the paperwork, all the legal things. Uh, he took care of making sure the car would get on the ship and uh, get it over state-wise. The best thing I think you could do if you want to import a, a Nissan Skyline GTR or any JDM car, that's, I would say is um, work with a good importer. Um, I, I know some great people over at International Importers. Uh, there's Taka, there's Sean. They're great people, they import uh, very good clean cars that they inspect personally, they check. Or, or if you have a car in Japan that you want to import that you, you're looking at, they can help you with everything from the paperwork to making it uh, smog legal to um, you know shipping it. So my motor build is quite extensive. I have an RB26. We have done uh, quite a bit to it. We have a Nismo N1 block in it with R33 crank. We have a Nismo N1 oil pump, foreign connecting rods, June pistons, HKS cams, HKS cam gears, timing belt. The turbo setup that I'm running on my RB26 is a HKS twin turbo kit. It's a GT2530. Currently I'm running my highest setting as a 1.9 bar, which is about 27 PSI. With that, I made about 600 and 20 or so on a dyno pack to the wheels. My suspension mods are, I'm running uh, Nismo control arms, I'm running some SPL stuff, I'm running uh, 
super high cast delete kit by SPL as well. I'm running some teen Momoflex coilovers. The tire and wheel setup on my car, 18 inch by nine and a half work in motion wheels, uh, wrapped in some Michelin Pilot Super Sports 255, 35, 18s. My exhaust setup, I'm running the Tomai turbo uh, manifolds and then I'm running HKS outlet pipes from my turbo down to a blitz down pipe with a three inch straight pipe setup from B Rev. There wasn't really a direction when I first got it. My idea of the GTR was to enjoy it, to drive it to bring back those memories of what I thought the GTR was before. I've always thought of the idea of, of a car build of almost of an OEM plus. I've always liked something where the car looks not too wild. I like that subtle, clean look. I actually like the idea of, you know, putting a lot of money under your hood, maybe under your suspension, you know, put a nice set of wheels, nice suspension, call it a day. So sometimes when I'm out in the canyons and people approach me and they see me driving the car, they're like, they're amazed that I'm actually driving it. In my eyes, I truly believe that if you have a car that you modify, that you build, that it's meant to be driven. It's not meant to be parked. It's not meant to be just looked at. It's meant to be enjoyed. Driving a right-hand drive car in California, a lot of people think it's quite tricky, but it's not that bad, actually. Um, I don't know if it's because I've had experience with right-hand drive cars, but I don't find it too hard. Um, ironically, the funniest thing I find is um, my turn signals. So, you know, on a Japanese car, your turn signals are gonna be on your uh, right-hand side. And, you know, when I go back to my Subaru, I tend to hit my right-hand side, which are my wipers. And you know, sometimes I just wash my car and I'll hit my wipers and there goes my fresh windshield. Fortunately, I've only been pulled over once. Um, and, you know, it's kind of not my fault. I was, I was um, behind a bunch of Lambos and the guys, you know, Lambos are pretty loud, so they decided to peel out. And he was clear with me. The moment he pulled me over, he's like, you know, I've got some complaints from the city about the noise. You know, you guys' cars are too loud. I could tell right away he knew what the car was. Pulled up my car, checked that everything was legit, that I, everything was legal, my insurance and my registration was legal. After that, he, he gave me everything back and he's like, I know what the car is, have fun, just be safe, and please respect the laws. That's what I tend to do, and that's what I always try to do. It's just that day I happened to be behind a couple of rowdy people. Once I got the car registered and everything was legal, of course I needed insurance to get on the road, so I called up my insurance broker and the first guy was like, his mind was blown. He did not know what to do, so he got a manager. The manager, he, he knew what was going on, so there's a special classification. They, they classify these um, cars, and I can't remember quite what was the name of it, but the car fell into that category, and it was, it was it's actually not that expensive to insure, um, and they knew what it was. The best advice I can get to people that are, that are starting to get into the car scene and they want to get a GTR, do it right. Go through an importer, you know, it's great people like international importers, people like that that are honest, that, they're, that will take care of you. Don't fall for the typical Craigslist, you know, thing where the pink is coming in the mail or, or you know, it's $5,000 less because the license plates you know, or something weird. Don't don't cut corners. Being in the skyline scene, I've met so many people that you know have told me these stories and about these experiences about buying cars and getting screwed over on the paperwork. Go to the right people and don't don't let yourself get fooled. Uh, try to, try to educate yourself as much as possible before buying it.